I wanted to talk a bit about the the stage after the EYFS. So we we read a lot at the moment about a a decline in in school readiness. So children who are leaving the early years foundation stage at maybe uh, at a disadvantage compared to previous cohorts. Thinking about you know, getting ready for school or getting ready for the next stage, should we be thinking more about that in our curricula for the early years? I think the um, the issue of transition has always been a strong one. Um, and I think the same, although I think COVID has illuminated that um, or intensified that, I think the issue is, is the same one, which is the, the whole, it's the whole dynamic or the tension between either children getting ready for school or school getting ready for the children. Uh, and obviously, you know, there are different schools of thought on, on, and different, you know, perceptions on, on either side and, and probably the reality and the, the most reasonable approach is somewhere in the middle. So um, as, as any early as educator, you would be considering the next stage of their of education and ensuring that children were equipped and skilled to be able to gain from that. But equally, as an educator who is taking in a group of children, you start with with where they are. You start with, you know, where they are in terms of their development, their knowledge, understanding, their behaviours, their skills, and so on. Um, and you you work with that and build upon that. So, I think that dynamic is a complex one. I don't think it's as simple as 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 saying if they could do this, 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 and they're ready for school. You know, that I think it, you know there there are intricacies around that which we have to be aware of. Um, and I think good transition models acknowledge that. They see transition as a process. They see it as a as a dialogue between the incumbent and the, the previous previous setting, and they share information. They share information about the uniqueness of children. And I think, particularly at the moment, given as I said, what, what's happened in terms of sort of post COVID, that's become, going to become really critical. I, absolutely, absolutely. I, the other thing I wanted to ask is your seminar today is about building a responsible curriculum um, very briefly can you can you speak a little bit about what that means well um, yeah I, the headline to that is uh, if we've learned anything for the past three years we've learned that um, life can be very unpredictable and that we've all been through this incredibly traumatic uncharted experience and it happened practically overnight. Overnight, your certainties about the world can be can can change dramatically. And I think that's you know that's a, a very strong lesson from what's happened. So the world that children are going up, growing up into is go, is very unpredictable. Um, we don't know what what the future is going to be like for them in 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 five, six, ten years time. We know technology is increasing at a rapid pace. We know there are, there are issues around climate change. We know there are issues around uh, social and economic change. We know the world in some ways is shrinking because of, because of technology. And all, all that goes into the mix. So to be responsible to those children, we, we need to ensure that they are prepared for that. And that requires a type of curriculum that empowers them to think, be flexible, be adaptable, be resilient, all the things which I think the past three years have, have challenged us with. So the idea of a responsible curriculum is, is asking the question, how well does this prepare children for an unknowable future? We, we don't know what that's going to look like. So we can only do what we can give, we can only do what we can to give children the opportunity or the possibility of coping with whatever happens and, and is flung at them in, in whatever way. Um, so that's one, one angle of responsibility. There's also, I think, and actually the, the family report was kind of instrumental in the, in the drive for this, is the perception of the early years community. And, you know, your, your report made it clear that, you know, that we, we still suffer from an image problem. We still suffer from an understanding of what we do. And that's not, I don't, I don't believe there's any big conspiracy about it. I just think there's a, a lack of understanding because early years is, is very unique, it's very specific. In some ways, educationally, it's very counterintuitive in, in terms of how we do what we do. So I think part of our responsibility is making sure we communicate that message effectively. And uh, part of that responsibility is engaging with the, the wider, certainly educational sphere to ensure there's a deeper understanding of how what we do 
feeds in as a continuum for, for what happens later. So part of that responsibility, I think, is, is how we have that conversation, how we have that dialogue.